Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I know I haven't done a full YouTube tutorial in so long, but here I am. I'm gonna try to keep it kind of basic. Um, I find that most of the questions I get on Instagram, um, I'll put my handle here so you can follow me because I'm on there most of the time. Um, most of the questions that I find I get on Instagram are really more basic techniques. Um, instead of like, I'm not getting a lot of questions about cut creases and, and really intense makeup artistry techniques. It's a lot of just like everyday girl basic questions. So I try, I'm gonna try to um, just kind of keep my tutorials more basic, um, except for a couple of tips here and there, just because I find that that is what most of my followers are requesting. So try to give you what you want. Okay, so I have already prepped my skin. We're gonna start with YSL's primer. I'm apply that mostly to my T-zone. And then work my way out. Okay. So I've got my YSL primer on. I'm gonna start with my eyebrows. I'm just using Anastasia Beverly Hills Dip Brow. I've been trying out the soft brown. I think it's a little too dark for me. And then I think the taupe is a little too light for me. So if I had time, I would probably mix them. Um, but I don't want to really go that full. It's not necessary is what I basically say <laughs> for, for today. So all I do is take, this is a this Anastasia Beverly Hills. I believe it's a number 12. It's her brush that has a angle on one end and the spoolie on the other. And I always start on the ends. My eyebrows are microbladed so I really don't have to draw in a crazy shape. I really just kind of go over what my girl is already microbladed and then I just keep it really like barely any product on the inner portion. Okay, then I'm going to take the Anastasia Beverly Hills number, I think it's the number 20. It's a spoolie on one end and a flat definer brush on the other end. I'm going to take a little bit of concealer, like I said. You can use any concealer, it does not matter. And I'm just going to clean up. So I start by going, just following the line. And if I messed up, kind of like going over where I messed up with the concealer. And then once I have that on there, I just turn the brush on its side and kind of drag that concealer down onto my eyelid to blend out that line I just drew. So that's all we're really doing. And this one little step, I swear, makes such a difference. And then I'll usually, with like just whatever products left on my brush, we'll go again about a third of the way on top of my eyebrow and do the same thing. I kind of just like follow the natural shape and then drag it down and that cleans up the top. And then I just blend that out using the brush on its side again. And then you have like this gorgeous, perfect eyebrow. And then I will take just like a little dot of concealer on my eyelid and I'll just use like a little mini beauty blender, your finger, a small brush, whatever you want. You could use that same number 20 brush and do concealer all over your eyelid. That's going to absorb any oil that your eyelid will naturally produce during the day. Some people have oily eyelids, I do because my eyelids are hooded. So they, because they touch each other all day, they produce a lot of oil. If I did not do this step and set it with powder, which is the next thing I'm gonna do is just set it with a powder. If I did not do this, then my eyeshadow would break up throughout the day because that oil would basically start producing because it doesn't have this layer of concealer and powder between it and the eyeshadow. It would make my eyeshadow break down throughout the day. So, a base, if you don't have oily eyelids, is still a good idea because um, it gives your eyeshadow something to blend on top of rather than just skin. It will blend out so much prettier if you put a base on. So in this case, my base is a concealer with powder over it. You can use like MAC um, paint pots. That's a good base. Um, I think some other lines make like eyeshadow bases. 
I've never been, I've never used one that I was a fan of, to be honest. Paint pots are fine, but a paint pot doesn't absorb the oil on my eyelid. So I would really only recommend a paint pot if you don't have an oily eyelid and you just want to create a base and you don't feel like doing that with concealer for whatever reason. So I'm going to start with a large fluffy blending brush. This is a Smith 232. You could use a MAC 224, any large fluffy blending brush. Today I'm going to use the Jaclyn Hill by Morphe palette just because it has a lot of colors in it. But again, I'm going to keep it kind of basic. So the first color I'm going to lay down is called a transition color. That's going to be some type of matte neutral. Most of the time it's in your kind of soft brown color range, which is like right here. So I'm going to dip into both of those actually, tap off the excess, and then I'm going to keep it right in the crease kind of messy. I, use, I hold my brush towards the end, not towards the top, towards the end so that my application is nice and soft and light and it's not heavy handed. And then I'm gonna go in with a smaller tapered blending brush. This is a Smith 235. Let's see if the camera will focus on it so you can kind of see. And we're going to go in with a darker brown. So now we're going to start staying more into the crease. So I'm going to, I can take my colors a little bit darker. Put a little bit of that sand in there. Same thing. And then I'm going to, because it's tapered, it kind of has like a little point. I'm going to keep that point right in the crease. So I basically just don't go as high with this color as I did with the previous one. So I'm going to take an even smaller blending brush. This is a Smith 247. You could use a uh, MAC 217. It's a smaller one. I'm going to go in my darkest color on the outer corner of my eye. So I'm going to go in with probably this and this, which is almost like a Swiss chocolate, which is a matte color. So I've got it on the tip of my brush. I tape off the excess. I take, I'm holding the brush at the end and I literally just set the brush on the outer corner of my eyelid, kind of pat it on there. And then I start slowly blending out, but I'm not moving my brush back and forth like I was doing earlier. I'm sticking right here to this outer corner. So I barely move the brush, just basically in small little circles and little teeny tiny back and forth because I only want that dark color for this look to be right here on the outside. So I kind of just keep circle blending, blending out the edges. And I might take it in halfway once I barely have any product left. And then I'll go back in with that 224 that doesn't have anything on it and blend again all of those colors together and soften the edge. Now let's put a pretty little shimmer on the eyelid. The best way to do this is to take a little bit of concealer. You can use that same um, 20 brush if you want. I think what brush I want to use. Um, it needs to be teeny tiny. Well, mine has to be teeny tiny because I have a small eyelid. If I do too much, it will just basically cover up the entire eyelid instead of the one little area I'm trying to cover up. So I'm just gonna take a little concealer. I'm gonna go right on this inner portion of just my eyelid. Once I have that done, I'll take a small beauty blender or your finger or another little brush. Kind of dot away any excess concealer. We don't want it to be really wet. Basically just kind of cleans up that eyelid for us. And then we can take a flat eyeshadow brush. I wear a flat eyeshadow 
brush, where would I be? Right here. Sigma E55. I'm gonna go in with, what am I gonna go in with? Let's keep it kind of golden maybe. Or do you want this? This is pretty. So we're just doing one of the shimmer, lighter shimmer colors. This is called Cran Apple. It'll be pretty with all the browns. And then we're gonna just place that, basically just tap that right on top of where we just placed that concealer. It's gonna give our eyeshadow something to stick to, makes it look brighter and shows up better because you're not trying to put this over a brown eyeshadow. And even though we didn't necessarily put the brown eyeshadow onto our lid exactly, you're still gonna get a lot of brown on your lid just from moving the brushes around when you first applied your transition in other colors. So now I have a pretty shimmer eyelid. All I'm gonna do is take, a very, uh, take that small little blending brush that we applied that dark brown to. I'm gonna take a little bit of the dark brown, barely any, probably some of these other colors. And again, outer corner, I'm just kind of blending where I just put that shimmer and where I originally put this outer color and just softening and I'm like barely touching my eyelid. I mean, it's like super soft application. And then I will do, this is when you would wanna do eyeliner. I use Marc Jacobs I think this is called Blacker. This is his Fine Liner Ultra Skinny Gel. I love this stuff because I, again, have a very small eyelid. If you do a liquid eyeliner every day, just do your normal eyeliner routine right here. So I take Fine Liner and I don't do a wing or anything. I just go right at my lash line. Just to darken my lash line. Give a little more definition. And then I take it to the outer corner. And then I usually go in with, like this is a MAC 212. I'll go in and just go over that and kind of make the line a little more perfect. And just kind of smudge it even more into my lash line. But again, if you, I would, you know, just do your normal, whatever your preferred eyeliner method is and if you have the kind of eye that can support a wing you do that wing girl okay then i'm i have eyelash extensions but i always put a little bit of mascara on them i'm using the dior black uh dior show blackout i'm just going underneath my eyelash extensions i stick primarily to the base my intention is really just to get whatever real lashes are left that my girl didn't put you know eyelash extensions on to get those to kind of stick to the eyelash extensions. And it helps darken the base of my lashes. And then I'll kind of just flick them out. Sometimes to make them look longer, I'll do a little bit up here at the top. Doing uh, mascara on your eyelash extensions will also help kind of clean up any powder. that you got on them. I just try not to like coat them in mascara because I know it's not good for them. And then I make sure that when I wash my makeup off, I am like, I use the cleaner that my girl sells with my eyelash extensions and I am very light handed when I go over my eyelashes. I don't go crazy so that I'm not like ripping out my eyelash extensions and my, obviously my real lashes with that. So there is one I done. Okay guys, we're all done with the eyes. Nice little soft look. Now let's go on to the face. We've already, I told you earlier, we already did the primer, the YSL. I'm going in with my Holy Grail foundation, which is the Dolce & Gabbana Perfect Matte Liquid Foundation. Very hard to find, unfortunately, but it's my favorite. If you can't find that, I do like the YSL All Hours Foundation. Um, I like to mix it with a little bit of a serum so that it kind of lightens it up because it can be a little drying. Um, and I also like now the name escapes me. Crap. Giorgio Armani Power Fabric. Um, Luminous Silk is gorgeous. It doesn't have enough coverage for what I like. 
Um, if you like medium coverage, try Luminous Silk, it's gorgeous. Power Fabric has more coverage, and so I prefer Giorgio Armani's Power Fabric. Okay. Now we're going to contour. Again, I told you at the beginning of the video, I'm going to try to keep it a little more basic. So I'm going to use a contour product that I think is a good beginner's cream contour product. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Contour Wand. Um, this is fair medium. I think she only makes like one or two colors. The only thing I don't like about it is the application wand. Um, it just, well, it's my fault. I took it on the airplane and I shouldn't have. I'm going to use a MAC 130, which is like a very small stippling brush. Um, and I'm just going to dip into the sides of the product since I took it on an airplane and the, uh, what's it called? You know, the, um, the pressure, cabin pressure caused, I guess because it's a squeeze tube caused the product to come out into the lid. So I wouldn't recommend traveling with these. I don't travel with them anymore because of that, but Obviously, I did not know that then. So I'm just following my natural cheekbone line. If you don't have a natural cheekbone line, suck in. And follow it from your ear down. Keep mine a little bit higher than my natural cheekbone so that when I blend out, it doesn't go further down really. Because once you kind of blend, it's gonna automatically drop a little bit. I'm just kind of blending very light circles we don't want to wipe off all of the foundation that we've just put on. So I just kind of keep it. I'm going to use Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. This is fair neutral. It's a little light for me. I probably will not buy this light of one next time. I'm going to do my inner corners.
We've got that all blended. I'm gonna take my Laura Mercier translucent powder. This is, I don't, it doesn't have a number, I don't think, right? I'm just gonna take like a tapered powder brush. I dip my powder in there. And then number one trick to getting out under eye creases is to take your beauty blender, dab, and pat all those creases out before you set it with powder. Once you set it, if that crease is there, you can't get rid of it, or it's much harder to get rid of it. So I basically just have the powder ready to go. Blend the concealer over that crease underneath my eye, and then immediately set it with powder. Now I'm not gonna powder the rest of my face because I wanna do one other cream product, and you should do all your cream products before um, any powder products. So this is the Charlotte Tilbury highlighting wand. It's basically, you know, the match to the other one. Um, let's see what brush do I want to use. I'll just use the Beauty Blender. So I'm going to take some of that highlight and put it right here on the high part of my cheekbone. You can see how gorgeous this highlight is. Might wrap it around a little bit. So beautiful. If you really want like a, a you know a kind of like a snatched highlighted um, cheekbone it really helps to do a cream highlight underneath your powder highlight especially as we get older you know if you're 18 you can pile on powder products and it won't really show your fine lines and the texture in your skin and your wrinkles and all those things because you don't really have them when you're younger but as we get older the more cream pro or powder products that you put on the more drying and older it can make you look. So that's why as I've gotten older, I tend to use more cream highlights, cream contours, that kind of thing. Um, and then just lightly set them with powder rather than only using powders. And then to achieve like a really highlighted look, I would have to use like a ton of, you know, highlighting powder. And it just highlights basically the texture, or the bad texture of my older skin. So, um, cream products tend not to do that. And then once you have a cream highlight underneath, you don't really need to use as much of a powder highlight on top. Same goes with contouring. So now that I have, okay, all of our cream products are on so we can set them with powder. I'm gonna take the Laura Mercier Translucent and just do a very light all over setting. And then I'm going to go in with a bronzer just to go over um, the contours. I'm going to use Max uh, Skin Mineralized Finish. I think this is in Give Me Sun. And just to, you know, if you want to keep, if you're really trying to contour and you don't have a very high cheekbone, use a much smaller, more angled brush. Like you could use something like this, an angled tapered brush, the NARS Eda, because you really want to keep that contour in a certain area. I have super high cheekbones, so I have a natural contour, so I can use kind of more like a bronzing brush. Um, I don't have to worry so much about staying, uh, you know, being so particular about where I place bronzer and contour powder. So every face shape is different. You kind of just have to learn what your face shape is and what you're trying to achieve. And if you have questions about that, you can shoot me a DM on Instagram and I'll explain further, try to explain it a little better to you if you want. Just kind of taking a little bit of that color on the sides of my nose. Okay, then we can do a little blush. I'm going to use NARS Orgasm. can be a little heavy handed with blush. It tends to be the first thing that fades in makeup. I don't think anyone's ever figured out why that is, but it definitely does. And I'm going to use that tapered brush. Any brush really will do for highlight. I'm going to use Becca's Opal. Go right over where we highlighted before. I take it up and over. Sometimes I'll just go ahead and take it underneath my brow bone. Which kind of depends on the look I'm going for. Take it down. Bridge of the nose. Above the lip. Maybe a little dot on the tip. If you 
do a little too much, just go over it with a powder brush with no product on it and just kind of blend. Okay, now we can finish the eyes. So basically I'm just gonna do this lower lash line. I'm gonna use a Morphe M507. You can use, there's, it's a great Jaclyn Hill JH38 pencil brush, anything like this kind of very small little blending brush. I'm gonna go in with those same kind of browns that we used the second time, which are these kind of up here. And I'm just gonna follow my natural lash line on the bottom. Blending, again, holding my brush at the end. We want to make it a little darker. Take that flat definer brush that I had earlier that I like had to smudge my eyeliner out with and either put eyeliner underneath there um, as well or you can go in with like the darker color shadow that we used and stick it completely right underneath the lash line. Don't kind of blend it down yet. Just create a, basically an eyeliner line with the darker shadow all the way to the end. Then go back in with that same blending brush and blend those two together. It's very smoky and pretty. But obviously if you like eyeliner, do this first and then do your eyeliner on the bottom or your waterline, however you like to do your eyeliner. Everyone is very particular about how they like their eyeliner. I get it. Okay, so we've got that one eye done. Let's take I really do like this little Jaclyn Hill by Morphe JH42. It's a teeny tiny little brush. I'm gonna take her lightest colors and I'm gonna stick it right here in the corner to highlight the inner corner of the eye. Any really light vanilla kind of shimmer color will do the trick. Oh, my camera died, I'm sorry. But I finished the eyes. We were just doing the um, bottom lash line and the inner highlight. I set my face with Urban Decay All Night Setting Spray, which is my favorite. And now I'm gonna show you um, a lip I haven't shown you in a long time, but it's been one of my holy grail kind of pinky nude lips for a really long time. So I'm gonna use Charlotte Tilbury's uh, Lip Liner in Pillow Top. I'm not going to crazy overline my lip. If you want to overline your lip, the best technique is to only overline on the center portion. So you'll overline a little bit on your cupid's bow and a little bit underneath here. And then to follow your natural line on the ends. Pillow Talk is a very like popular Charlotte Tilbury color and she has it in a lip gloss which has a whole line of products um, with Pillow Talk. It's gorgeous. A lot of times I will line my entire lip but for this look I don't really need to. I'm going to use my Holy Grail Pink Nude which is, I really, it's more like a pink. It's not so much a nude anymore. Um, they've reformulated it and I think the color has changed over the years, but I still love it. It's by Hourglass. It's called Canvas. It is a liquid lipstick. They also make a matching lip liner. Don't buy it. I don't like it. It's too light. It doesn't match. This pillow talk I find matches perfectly. So pretty. I don't do a lot of like brown nudes um, on me personally. I tend to gravitate toward more pinky nudes. Um, but I mean, I love that look on everyone else. And then when I try to do it on myself, I'm like, eh. but um, for a pink nude or a pinky look, 
this canvas is my favorite. And then this is the matching lip gloss. I do like them layered on top of each other. I think they're really pretty together. So there we go. And this side of the way so you can see and the whole look. So I hope you learned a couple of things. Again, I try to keep it a little basic. Um, if you like this video, please click, I think it's the plus, you haven't done YouTube in forever, I forget. I think it's a, click the subscribe button so that you'll get notified when I post new YouTube tutorials if you don't follow me on Instagram, but I usually tell you on Instagram as well. Um, but then we'll shoot you an email when I post a new YouTube video if you subscribe down below, and then always give me a like if you don't mind, if you enjoyed this video. Uh, in the comments or on my Instagram, you can shoot me a DM if there are other ideas, uh, videos that you would like to see, whatever content um, that you would like, let me know. And this is the final look.